And the poverty, you can smell it. I mean, it's not just you see it, but you can see in every corner that things are very difficult for them. Food once or two times a day is very difficult. Uh, international Literacy and Development, which we call ILAD for short, uh, is a um, nonprofit organization that works among minority people groups. Um, we're trying to empower locals through literacy and through holistic development. ILAD, local solutions to local problems. Again, not international solutions to local problems, local solutions to local problems. Our job is to figure out with those local folk what assets they have, what skills they have, what capabilities they have, and then we seek to design solutions to their unique circumstances, both education and business, so that we are maximizing what they themselves were already bringing to the party. We had a young man coming out of University of Lome that had a vision for changing his country from within. Our team had started talking with him about joining us uh, in agricultural development among the villages where we were working. And so he came and joined our team. He started a pineapple farm, an organic pineapple farm, and his goal was to teach his folk, his community, his people, how to break the cycle of poverty. So we did lots of different research on the farm, and he also started inviting people to come and, and see. And there, originally there was a couple of guys who just showed up and asked him, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm planting pineapples. And so they kind of took note and watched for a little bit, and then they asked if they could join. And for me, demonstration is, is, is the operative word there. He began not just telling them what to do, but day by day by day, starting out with hoeing a row, planting pineapple shoots, the hard work of actually creating a farm that was going to become a money-producing, business-oriented enterprise in the communities where he was working. One of the things that became necessary was to provide some kind of funding for the farmers, for them to invest in um, the agricultural production. So um, we started a microfinance program. The first goal is to teach the farmers to save and then teach them that they must plan for the education of their children. The farmers in my country is they are like marginalized and nobody believes in them and nobody trusts them. We, we really want to give them loan. We, we don't think that they are bad people. We don't want to give them opportunity to come and start their farm and then make more income and pay their loan and they are doing it. as a result of all the system we, we put in place, everybody is able to pay his loan back to us. 
and we we do not have any anyone who owe us. And one of the things he's doing is showing people how to diversify their income. We've got pineapples, we've got corn, we've got um, livestock, and now he's adding tilapia. Uh, he wants to do everything on the farm in a way that can be done locally. Uh, he's also started the Pineapple Juice Company, which is providing the market for the organic pineapples that the farmers are growing. They are bottling and selling juices now across three different countries here in Western Africa. In the name, that confluence of the words literacy and development, not many places in the world where you are trying to get at both the business side of these communities and the education side of these communities at the same time. It is absolutely ILAD's belief that the two are connected, that opportunities, possibilities, the future lies through both. Being able to read and write in your own language uh, gives you opportunities and opens up uh, a whole new world of information to you that you didn't have otherwise. Learning to read and write, especially for women, helps them in their business, even with their families. Another initiative that we've just recently started that Latte in the community uh, in one of the villages, uh, they saw a need for a middle school. The closest middle school to this village was approximately 12 kilometers away. Lorsque j'étais à Dangbe, chaque dimanche je marchais avant d'aller dans le village. Chaque vendredi je revenais encore chez mes parents. Some of the problems with that, besides just the social ills that come with kids being off by themselves, um, we had found that there were uh, 22 pregnancies in one year, one school year. 15 of those were actually by the teachers themselves. So there was a lot of pressure on these young girls who were being away from their homes. If they got pregnant, they wouldn't be able to go to school again. They are ashamed sometimes of their, their selves. school <laughs> we decided to, to have school for them in their own uh, village. And then there's no question of distance to walk 10 miles. And then each student is live with his own parents and then attend uh, the school. One of the really amazing things about the middle school project and the initiative was that it was totally by the Togolese. The community came together to say this is an issue that we need to solve. They're the ones that saw the problem, they're the ones that said this is what we need to do to address it. Um, they pulled their money together to initially start it. And the reason that this is important to us is that it's exactly what ILAD is desiring to see. If uh, we can empower under-resourced areas by bringing in tools or 
uh, skills that they can use to solve their own problems, then their progress doesn't depend on ILAD and it will continue even when ILAD is gone. My role is to be proactive and to start dealing with the problem my community is facing and then one by one we can uh, collaborate with other people in my community to, to make where we are, where we are born, a better place for our children, for the next generation to, to live. We are the one who can change the life of our people for better. The change can happen, and the change can happen in a long-term kind of fashion. Not here just for the day, not here for the year, wanting to make change for the long term. And so ILAD's future is one of growth. There are, again, hundreds of millions of people across the globe that need this same kind of community change. The good news for me is that the model that we have seen here in ILAD Togo is a model that will work in multiple places across the globe. So we really want to, to work hard so everywhere in, in Togo, in Africa, in, in the world, wherever we are, to give opportunity to the next generation to, to dream uh, the best for themselves, the best for people around them. A Georgina, a little one of Dracumia, a Georgina, a Georgina can you come out, Bleru, in my dark, we are a doa and no, a divina gather, and I've been milk, and I've been a lamel of fine, a genial phantom of Vogua.